Hello again. Thanks for watching. What I'm going to do now is describe uh, for you my uh, rotating magnet motor test bed. And uh, I, I built it uh, specifically to explore the Milo magnet motor, but since Milo's imploded, uh, I'm going to just use uh, this for general purpose uh, magnet motor testing. And hopefully, um, I'll be able to uh, clear up some misconceptions and uh, give people some pointers as to how to test their magnet motor. Okay, so um, there's a base assembly, okay, and uh, it's just a piece of plywood. And I hope that since I'm showing you the drive motor right here, you're not going to make me lift it up and look underneath. But okay, we can look underneath. But, uh, yes. Okay, so, it does in fact have a drive motor right here. This motor <clears throat> has a uh, little rubber wheel on it, and this wheel will contact a portion of the rotor support that I will show you in a minute. Uh, this motor also has a one-way clutch or one-way bearing on it so that in the drive direction which is like that the shaft and the, and the roller turn together but in the anti-drive direction as you can see the <coughs> roller turns but the bearing does not or the shaft does not and what this does is it will allow the disc to turn on its own with very little drag once the motor is shut off but when the motor is running it will of course drive the disc and the advantage of driving the disc is of course I can run it up to a known RPM but then I can disengage the motor and time the time that it takes for the wheel to run down I can also gauge whether um, my modifications are helping or hurting by looking at the uh, stabilized speed of the unit. Um, I know uh, how fast it runs with uh, say a neutral arrangement or weights only uh, so if it runs faster than that then I know that I've come up with something that helps and if it runs more slowly then whatever I've done has actually hurt. So that's the base, the motor. The motor is actually being powered by this um, wall wart right here, which I plug in down here. Okay. And uh, now for the rotor. This rotor is heavy. Uh, I just weighed it. It, it weighs uh, almost four kilograms and about uh, almost a kilogram, 990 grams of that is the uh, magnets and their keepers. Okay, so it's massive. Uh, and uh, it's on a shaft. And here's the bearing structure right here. This is just a big piece of plastic that I've machined. It's got a bearing in the bottom and one in the top. And a spring to preload the bearings so that there's a constant pressure on both bearings. This is just a collar to uh, secure the spring. Okay, so that turns around like that. And uh, that will fit inside this part of the base. Now the roller from the motor contacts this hub structure here. And what I've done is I've put a piece of black tape on there uh, covering about a fourth or maybe a fifth of the circumference. And what that does is provide a small uh, tenth of a millimeter or so difference in spacing between this part and this part. And that's sufficient so that the roller will only roll along the tape when the uh, untaped portion of the hub uh, passes the roller. The roller is not in contact. So the disc is only powered uh, through about a third 
or so of its rotation. There's one end of the tape and there's the other end of the tape. Okay, I'm going to set the camera down momentarily so that I can uh, put the disc in position. Clunk. Okay. All right. So I put the disc uh, on its mount, and there's a set screw right there. And so I'll just tighten that set screw. Snug it. Okay. So now the disc is on its mount, and it's free to turn like that. Okay. And uh, there you can see the ro the roller, and you can also, yeah, you can actually just barely make out the gap between the roller and the hub. So you can see that that uh, that motor is only going to contact the hub for about a third of the travel. Okay. So now. That's the disc, its bearings, its base, and then now we've got the stator report support assembly, and I've got a bunch of stuff mounted to that. Uh, first thing, of course, is a thermocouple on the stator. Yeah, it's a type, type K thermocouple monitoring the stator's temperature, and we'll be reading that on this gauge here. Uh, and uh, then I've got a little uh, coil down there. That's yeah, just a sense coil. And uh, there is a <coughs> piezoelectric uh, uh, speaker element that I've adapted to use as a vibration sensor. We're calling that number three. This is kind of a breakout uh, board here to adapt the sensor leads to BNC connectors and it also provides a 5 volt uh, regulated power supply for the two Hall effect sensors. There's one there there's another one there. These are ratiometric Hall effect sensors that are calibrated uh, to uh, <laughs> calibration is traceable to NIST if anybody actually cares uh, from Allegro Microsystems ratiometric sensors and one of them I'm using uh, to count pulses and the other one uh, we will be using later to look at the shapes of the magnetic fields as they go by uh, to uh, tune the unit so that we can tune for you know, a soft in, hard out, or vice versa, or whatever anybody wants to tune to. Okay, I'm going to set the camera down again so that I can mount this. Yes, I am. Yes, this will only take a minute. It goes this way. Okay. So, with this modular construction, everything's pretty easy, more or less. Got here is just a couple of spacers. Okay, back live on um, screwing down the <coughs> stator support assembly with all the junk on there. Uh, on to out there. Okay, so sensor number one is going to be this little Faraday coil here, and it will be looking at it'll be looking at a magnet in the edge of the disc, counting turns, and it will be partnered with this Hall effect sensor down here, number two and we'll be displaying the time difference between those two on the oscilloscope and uh, I've gone ahead and uh, done some math and figured out the uh, what the RPM is going to be um, when those two pulse counters are displaying their pulses and of course I've got the little power takeoff here if we should decide to demonstrate taking some power off uh, okay that's the assembly don't forget about the motor, and, uh, bye.